G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and our weekly power ranking series. This is the second last time I'll be doing this this year. And to be honest with you, this is the one piece of content I'm not gonna miss because it's so difficult. So if you're unaware, this is us trying to rank and plot general form lines in the competition with a particular focus on the last five games, ranking teams based on the form they're in. This has been a s s extremely, extremely difficult task this year and the league is so volatile. And even looking at the changes that I've made this week to the rankings, you know, there are teams who had good wins that don't move. There are teams that didn't play that well and will move up. There'll be teams that, you know, played really poorly and didn't move down that much. It's got everything. But I ask you to bear in mind, like a lot of this is going to be based around what's relative in the competition as well. What's happening in other games around the teams we're going to be discussing. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. So I'm going to start from the bottom of my power rankings from the least form side of the competition all the way to the top spot. And we do have a new team in top spot. Now, let's start with the bottom three. This has been the same bottom three for a long time, but the order has changed again. So Richmond stay bottom with a eight goal loss against St Kilda. Don't really need to elaborate that on, on that too much. I think they're looking forward to the trade and draft period where they can take back some control over this season. Been a tough year for Richmond fans. I've got West Coast leapfrogging North Melbourne. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. North Melbourne had been the better team for a long time now. And while they had played better than West Coast for most of that game, they still let it slip and West Coast came home with a wet sail and kicked 12 goals in a quarter and a half. West Coast had to travel a bit more, kind of a neutral venue though. I know it's not a true North Melbourne game, but it's a slight advantage there. I'm gonna give West Coast the credit. They've also won an extra game in their last five. North have gone one and four with one win over Richmond. The Eagles have beaten the Suns and North. So I think it's justified to do that. You can decide in your own mind how much this even matters. But anyway, let's move up. There's, there's four teams that I've got sliding down to the next four positions. I've got the next worst side of the competition right now being the Melbourne Football Club. Now, this is a tricky one because I've got Carlton just ahead of them. Now, would Melbourne beat Carlton on the weekend? I think they would have. Um, but over the stretch of form, I think both of these sides have been bleeding. Now, Melbourne played in a terrible Saturday night game against Port Adelaide, and, and to be fair, got within two points. But on the stretch of form, I think they have been struggling for some time. Now, in the background, we're seeing reports of trade requests. Petrarca's unhappy. We'll get into that in a later date. I don't know how much of that is real. Um, but I do think there is something under the surface at Melbourne that is that needs rectifying. I'm not going to say they're going to implode, but the, this season has been a shambles and they're already thinking about next year. So I've got them the next worst side and Carlton just above that. Look, Carlton were horrendous, absolutely. But prior to that, their three losses were against the Bulldogs, Power and the Pies. They did lose all of them. They weren't shameful in any of them. So I'll give them a bit of a break considering injury as well. I, I probably shouldn't be considering injury, but we'll see. Now, if they go to Perth and lose to West Coast, they might plummet further down these rankings. Uh, I've got Essendon slightly above that. Again, it's harsh to see them drop from whatever they were last week. I think they're dropping three or four spots. Um, and I don't think the loss in isolation to Gold Coast is that shameful considering they had their chances to win it. One goal nine in the last quarter, couldn't put them away, paid the price. But uh, over the stretch, you know, I don't think their form has been you know, as poor as a Carlton or a Melbourne when you consider they lost to the Crows very narrowly at home in a pretty good high-scoring shootout and they beat Fremantle the week before. Fremantle have been in good form up until that point. So they slipped down because there's a few teams moving around, but that's the way I see it at the moment. Got Collingwood slightly ahead of them. I think I flipped this around because Collingwood's loss in Sydney was probably better than Essendon's home loss to the Gold Coast Suns. Gold Coast's first away win this season. I think that factors into it for me. Collingwood were in a winning position. They beat Carlton the week before. Um, last quarters have been horrendous. This time it cost them. Last week it didn't. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, it's pretty line ball. They've also won an extra game in their last five. So that's the way I decided to split it. Even if some people might argue Essendon might beat Collingwood this week if they played each other. That's possible. Very line ball between those two sides. Got the Gold Coast moving up to 11th. They've won two out of their last five with wins over the Power and the Bombers. And both of those are pretty good wins. You know, the Power have been in some good form this year. The Bombers were at Marvel. Um, and their, their other losses have been against GWS and the Brisbane Lions. And those are probably two of the best teams in the competition right now. And of course, the mighty West Coast Eagles. I think they were a bit unlucky. West Coast really lifted to a, a gear we didn't think West Coast had um, to lose that game. So I've got them in 11th, which may or may not be generous. Sydney have got bouncing back to 10th. Now, their form is a mess, considering we're only a couple of weeks removed from that huge loss to Port Adelaide. But that last quarter against Collingwood, in particular with Heaney and Warner getting their hands on the footy, Heaney is probably the biggest barometer player. 
he was fantastic. And they've just got them bouncing up. It's an even competition, really. And while their losses were horrendous, particularly the Dogs and the Power, I, I have generously bumped them up ahead of teams like Collingwood, and they were ahead of Gold Coast last week, so that will stay the same. St Kilda, you know, they're, they're three in out of their last five. Again, they've only beaten Richmond, so they bump up quite a bit in these rankings, perhaps generously, but they've won more than they've lost in the last five, which is more so than any team below them, currently on this power ranking. There's a big win over the Bombers in that time, big win over West Coast, and a big win over uh, Richmond. And their losses were against the Crows at Adelaide Oval, which, you know, can be a tough ask. And then, unless you're Hawthorne, again, Adelaide are another hard team to really plot this year. And their other loss was against the Brisbane Lions. So again, a mixed bag of form, but over the stretch, that, that does compare favorably to the teams below them. I've got Adelaide just above bumping up. They have also beaten St Kilda in the last five and, you know, most recently pumped the Dogs who were probably second seed last week. It's funny how things change in this game so quickly. Huge gap between their best and their worst. Um, you know, the week before they went to GMHBA, not long before that, they uh, beat Essendon at Marvel. They also had a horrendous loss at home to Hawthorne. But over the stretch, there's three wins, there's two losses. One of those losses was good at GMHBA and the other one was terrible. So that puts them right in the middle of the competition and moving up. This has been a fairly decent end to the season for Adelaide, save for that Hawthorne performance. I've got Fremantle pretty much in the exact same spot. I don't, I'm unwilling to put Adelaide ahead of Fremantle, but Fremantle have lost more than they've won in their last five. Nonetheless, still better than Adelaide, I would have to say. So they've had wins over West Coast and Melbourne, and their losses were against the Bombers in Melbourne, and then the Cats at home, and uh, the Hawks in Tassie. So I don't think they've really been horrendous in any of those. They let that slip against Essendon, no doubt, but some tough fixtures there. Hawthorne in Tassie right now is not great. The Cats, you know, dare I say, they're actually a pretty good side. Despite me thinking Fremantle had that game, tight loss against good opposition. And if, if Geelong rank highly in these power ranking, rankings, which they generally do, then you have to sort of weight that into it. So I think Fremantle's still in seventh. I've got Hawthorne not moving up. Not moving up. This might seem harsh. I know that. But perhaps it's worth considering the form of Carlton and the injury part. I think, I think Hawthorne were going to win that game significantly anyway. But maybe that's just a little caveat. So I have Geelong ahead of that. Now, both of them have won four of their last five. Hawthorne actually did lose to Geelong quite heavily. So maybe that's the tiebreaker as well. But for Geelong to go to Perth and beat Fremantle in Perth, I think that's a really good win too. So, you know, you could expect Hawthorne to move up these rankings, but it's, we're talking about narrow margins here. And similarly, I have the Bulldogs sliding from second to fourth this, this week on the back of a poor performance in Adelaide. Terrible in front of goal, really dirty day for him. Really bad in Adelaide this year, two bad losses. Uh, but nonetheless, the form over the stretch has been good, and they've still won four of their last five. And that includes a win in Sydney, and then a big win against the Cats in GMHBA, a win over the Blues as well, and then the Blues obviously went on a bit of a form slump. But generally speaking, good, compelling form from the Western Bulldogs. They're still in the top four. It was a bad week, but I mean, ugh, so many of these teams have had a bad game recently. I've got Port Adelaide staying in third. Yeah, not much to read into a two-point win away from home over the Ds. Now, it is an important win, and good teams win ugly sometimes. And that's exactly what they did. But they stayed pretty much exactly the same um, as last week with four out of the last five. One loss at Metricon this year. I'm going to keep calling it Metricon because people's first does not roll off the tongue. So put Adelaide about there. And I think I'm going to have a new top two, or at least the order of the top two has switched. So I've got GWS as the top side of the competition over the Brisbane Lions. And I think that's fair. When you consider two things, GWS are the only undefeated side in the last five weeks, and they did just beat Brisbane at the Gabba. Now, I know there's arguments around GWS being extremely efficient in front of goal, and Brisbane were poor in front of goal. Nonetheless, uh, I think you have to be a little bit biased to results here, and GWS did beat them at the Gabba. So keeping Brisbane in top spot didn't make sense. Now, again, this is just a form ranking, and I don't think reflects my true belief on who is actually better, because I think come September... I'm probably still thinking Brisbane, and to be honest, I think Sydney will come back. But this is not a prediction. This is trying to reflect the form of teams in the competition right now, and it is so even. GWS are ranked number one, but they're not meaningfully that much better than many of the teams in the top six or seven. So we'll see. It's going to be a telling final fortnight, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think of my rankings, what you would do differently. One of these to go, cannot wait, but I'm also really looking forward to the last fortnight of the season and then final. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.